we'll go ahead and get started. We'd like to welcome Will Zalatoris to the interview room here at the Century Tournament of Champions. Will, you got your first PGA Tour victory at the FedEx St. Jude Championship. Um, they ha allowed you to get here. Um, just kind of talk about what it's like to be starting your year off at the Century Tournament of Champions, Maui, the course, all of that good stuff. Yeah, it's been a uh, interesting four months to say the least uh, since Memphis. But yeah, beautiful place. You know, this is probably the tournament that I watched the most growing up, just given the fact that you know you're watching it uh, at night uh, back home. So uh, pretty cool seeing uh, some of the holes for the first time. You know, after all the years of watching it on TV. So uh, a lot of fun, and obviously uh, pretty happy to be here, uh, given the win, and then uh, you know, last three months of being off. Yeah, and then um, how were the holidays? You got married. I did. Yeah, it was great. Um, you know, Caitlin and I got married in uh, December, and uh, it kind of feels like we've been married for a while. So we've been together for so long. So, uh, but it was a lot of fun, a lot of great celebration. Awesome. And with that, we'll open up to questions. Ready first, Alan Shipnuck. Uh, uh, Will, when when you're on the outside looking in at this tournament, like uh, you're playing well, you're having success, but you just can't quite kick down the door I mean how satisfying is it to finally be here and be part of this yeah you know it's uh, it's such a cool spot you know I, I think I've just been so close so many times and so I think if anything after having the time off it's kind of hard to remind myself of all the second places um, but yeah it's, it's, just, uh, it's pretty cool to be with you know all the past champ or all the champions from this past year and then uh, obviously the guys who made it to East Lake as well so um, this is the best of the best I mean, it's exclusive, right? You have there's only 30 guys at the tour championship. This is otherwise the smallest gathering you have all year. So, you feel like you've kind of you're finally in the club. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it, you see these we see each other a lot throughout the year, but um, it's kind of fun. You know, this week playing practice rounds and carts and kind of roaming around with the boys, and we're all making jokes about maybe being a little rusty. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, like I said, this is the best of the best. So. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's fun being here with uh, playing against the best competition in the world. How how are you balancing uh, just having fun and easing into the season versus this is a, a huge tournament and there's a lot at stake. Yeah, you know, I think coming off an of injury, I think it's mainly just kind of getting getting my feet wet again. Um, you know, I I feel really good with everything. I had a couple of really great sessions at home. Um, you know, I learned a lot about my body and probably more than I think I ever wanted to and um, but you know I, speed's the same everything feels really good and so um, you know just keep doing what we're doing and you know let the next one get in the way. Doug Ferguson, well, with Press. The deepest apologies for having missed your introduction um, can, in, unless you already did this can you kind of recap exactly what you learned about your body in terms of what was wrong, how you fixed it, and do you have any issues going forward? Yeah, no, I, I spent some time with uh, Greg Rose, or Dr. Greg Rose at TPI. Um, we basically kind of went through a whole assessment of seeing where I'm at, and it was really, I think, keeping longevity uh, in mind as opposed to anything else. You know, it's hard when, you know, you're the number one player strokes game uh, T to green this past year, or at least approach to want to go in and say, hey, you need to make some changes. So, of course, whenever we maybe mention something that you might want to change, I think all of us kind of had some red flags go up. But, uh, you know, I think the big thing for me is, is, you know, we spent a lot of time understanding the pressures of my golf swing and understanding how I, how I push off my right side. Um, and I do it later than a lot of guys, so what that does for someone with a lot of side bend is that gets my right hip high and my spine's tilted back. And so, um, as Dr. Rose said, duh, no wonder why you had a back issue. But um, it's a good thing that it was just a motor pattern as opposed to something, something that was structurally wrong because that's something that you can fix just like that. Um, you know, I was given a 12-week recovery period, and I... I probably, if I needed to push it, I probably could have made it nine, but I don't think anyone's ever complained about taking too long uh, coming back from injury. So I, my speed is, is actually, I'm playing a shorter driver, uh, about an inch and a quarter, but I've actually got the exact same speed. So eventually, once I go back to the 46, I'll actually be net up speed uh, once I go back to uh, my original gamer. Why are you at a shorter it just helps with turning around uh, the corner a little bit. You know, it's uh, you know having the longer lever makes a wider arc. So missing shots out to the right 
So giving me a little bit more time uh, helps spring shots back to online. And I'm sorry, but I missed one thing. Is it not structural? You said motor? Just more of a motor pattern than anything. Um, you know, like I said, the right hip got a little high with, with side bend. You know, side bend is really not a bad thing as long as you do it right, and I just wasn't doing it correctly. Um, and so really just trying to, there's just a few things here or there that I needed to change. Really just it's setup. I'm not really focused on anything when it comes to uh, how I do it in the golf swing. Just, you know, even though it is a motor pattern thing, it's how I set up at a dress is how I'll fix that. Dan Rapport. I was just going to ask what you're changing in your actual golf swing or preparation to account for the, the new information that you have, but it sounds like it's more of a setup thing than anything else. Yeah, so I, I basically am trying to get more, uh, be a little bit more centered as opposed to having uh, kind of ball forward with more spine tilt at address. So I'm trying to get more centered over it and work more around my right side. So more of a turn as opposed to kind of a lateral shift. Um, because, you know, like I said, it's just when my right hip gets high and the spine tilts back, you're now all of a sudden creating all that stress on your back. And so um, it was actually nice because I was, I was able to bring the ball flight down, which, I mean, I know living in Texas, you know, I'm used to hitting the ball low, but it's doing it by itself as opposed to having to manipulate it. So it was actually a kind of a nice fix. When you have a break like that, what do you miss most? It's competition. I mean, it's just so bored when I was out, you know, like I felt like I'd go out and hit a few chips or maybe have a few beers and, or have a few putts and then maybe need to go grab a few beers with my boys. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, especially being in contention as much as I was last year, there's just no better feeling than it. Um, you know, whether you win or lose, it's, it's just what you practice for. And so, you know, not being able to have a club in my hand for a couple months was, I don't think I've done that probably since I was like eight or nine. Um, but, um, you know, watching some of my friends play, you know, going to the President's Cup, kind of keeping my mind active and, you know, spending some time um, with the guys back home, even just riding around in a cart while they were playing it, you know, keep my mind active even though my body wouldn't let me. And then once I came back, um, you know, it was pretty easy to get the competitive juices flowing. Adam Shupak, Golfing. Did you ever have any back trouble before? Did this come out of the blue? I had uh, July of 21, uh, I had an issue there, but that was muscular, not structural. So uh, I think, you know, this one was really what I was told it was out of the blue. Um, you know, I, I did a pretty deep dive with Damon, my trainer, with Dr. Rose, Dr. Duffy. I mean, we've looked at everything that I was doing to make sure I was doing the right things, and we were checking all the boxes, and it was just strictly a motor pattern thing, which... It's kind of a good thing and a bad thing because it's, you know, when you're that, when I was hitting the ball the way that I was, it's hard to want to change anything. But at the same time, I actually saw some benefits. You know, I'm, I'm more efficient in my golf swing. So that's why my speed is the same, actually, with the shorter driver. It's just because of the efficiency now that I, of how I push into a golf ball. When did you resume playing and how much have you played since then? Uh, so I... December 1st, I think, was the first day I was cleared for full activity um, and really have just been doing as much as I can since then. Pick up any new hobbies or, or, or speak language? Yeah, I found the end of Netflix. <laughs> so, no, I, um, we've been pretty busy at home. I mean, uh, obviously getting married and then, uh, you know, I've got a dog at home now, so it's been it's been fun. Anything else for Will? I mean, for us, we're going to make a big deal about this is the start of a, a new era on the PGA Tour and the elevated events and the whole new schedule and all that. I mean, do, do you feel any of that? Does it, does it feel different uh, what you're embarking on this season? It's yes and no because it's already kind of been that way. I think we're really, you know, you've kind of, like I was talking with some of the guys earlier, um, you know, it's like there's some guys that, I, some of my friends that I only saw two or three times last year. And so part of it is because of playing the schedule that I was playing, you're kind of already playing in elevated events because we just call them invitationals. I mean, so now we have a series of elevated events where now you're going to have the same guys show up for 20 events a year. And I think really it's just trying to get, 
you know, I, I know you guys have probably heard this a million times, but getting the top guys to show up together at the same time. Why does F1 work? Well, you know Lewis Hamilton's going to be there at every single race, so is Max Verstappen. And so now when you have these elevated events, you know that the top guys are going to be there. And so as opposed to maybe, you know, one guy plays one event in the fall that, you know, maybe you would almost be surprised that they're playing. Well, now we have a structure to where you know these guys are going to be here this many times and they need to be here, you know, one time in the fall, give or take. So I think in reality it doesn't even, like my schedule doesn't change it at all, actually. It's just kind of a rebrand or a rename, however you want to look at it. Talking about your friends, you didn't see very much, and there's still another 30 tour events out there that don't have that elevated stature. They're not going to get a lot of the stars. Do you, do you worry about the viability of, of those tournaments? And is there going to be another tour for your buddies to play? I wouldn't put it as... Uh, not allowed to play. I would put it more in the sense of our premier events have our premier players and we're at a limited field and you have your regular tour events and we're, we need to play three of them. You know, so you're going to see us at plenty of the other events. And so I think if anything, you're just trying to make sure of that our top guys you're seeing as much as possible together because when you have 47 events, you want to be careful of maybe watering down the product, and now we're just making sure that our product is as strong as possible. And quite frankly, no, I'm not worried about these other events, you know, worrying about their viability or whatever it is going forward. I mean, if you look at our title sponsors going forward, next year we have the same amount as we've had in other years, and we're locked in for a pretty long time with a lot of the other ones. So, like I said, I think having these top guys, you know, show up together is only going to make our product better as a whole. Time for a couple more. Do you anticipate you'll skip any of the elevated events? I don't think so. I think I, I got to listen to my body this year. Um, I, I don't plan on skipping any of them. I think, you know, with being in the room in Delaware, being on the pack, I think me skipping an event is only going to be because of health related issues and it will be anything else because. Why would I, I mean, sorry to sound like a, a little ignorant here, but why would I turn down any of the nine events we're playing for $20 million against the best players in the world? You know, if, if I, when I'm at home, I'd be playing golf anyway, so I might as well play it against some of the best players in the world. Is there anything you have to do warming up and stretching differently than, you know, is it a different process now, getting ready to play? More post-hab work, for sure. Uh, Pre-round stuff, a lot of the same. Um, like I said, because we had checked all the boxes in terms of the, of the pre-round, what I do in the gym with the activations, but the after, you know, if I'm going to play as much as I'd like to play, I need to make sure that, you know, maybe my hips don't get out of line type thing. So a lot of work after I'm done with a, a round is going to be crucial to make sure that um, I'm able to play, you know, four or five weeks in a row like I like to. We'll wrap up with Doug. Is there possibly a scenario where if all the top guys are playing – all the same tournaments that it gets old or it loses it, it, it loses the amount of buzz that it has maybe in the, in the first time you go around this becomes the new norm and it's I th I see your point it's not a point I'm, I'm no no I, I see no I, I see your point but if you're sick of the top guys playing against each other then maybe go watch something else like you know what I mean <laughs> like you know what I, I think that's what makes you know, the majors so much fun is you look up on a leaderboard and typically you've got a lot of the top, or, you know, leaderboard of majors or leaderboards that, in the playoffs or whatever. Um, you know, now instead of having them just stuck in four weeks, five weeks, whatever it is, now you're going to have it spread out throughout the year. Um, I think that's, there's more implications for each week now, which I think, if anything, will now make people be incentivized to watch more because there's more. There's going to be more at stake in the fall going forward. I mean, that's something that we obviously, why we went to a wraparound season. So, obviously, we were going away from that. But now these guys are going to be fighting to obviously plan for, you know, whatever it may be, right? you know, these elevated events going forward, if you will. So, that's where I think every week now has an implication going forward. And now if you have every week has an implication and now you have more guys, more of the top guys together, this is the best way we can promote our product. I wouldn't call it a point. I think I was reaching, actually. With it, <laughs> honest, but I, what made me think of it, as you brought up the majors, is we have these moments where all the top guys, and it's, and it's cool. And I, 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 I'm just thinking aloud here in terms of how much um, separation you would get mm -hmm. from 
from guys being there week after week after week, 17, 18 times a year? I get so better than the alternative. Yeah, I mean, if, if you get sick of watching football, I mean, they got 18 weeks too. You know, it's the same thing. You know, but we're spread oh. out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, 18, however many they're playing now. But um, like I said, I think this is a really good thing for us going forward because as long as we can get the top guys playing together, we're going to have our best product. You know, if you're not allowing our top players to play against each other, then all of a sudden, you know, you're going to get to the end of the year. And I understand what you mean by there could be some implications of, you know, hey, these guys are finally going head to head. Well, we're going to give that to you January through August. Um, just because you said that, I forgot what I was going to say. Going, going forward, because this is so critical getting to, to 24, uh, is the most critical part in your mind making sure that the people who aren't the top players yet have a chance to become that? Uh, yeah, you're talking to one that two years ago, I don't think anyone had heard of me. So, of course, I mean, as long as we keep our avenue of college guys, corn fairy guys, guys who are coming up the ranks all the way through, you know, like I was up playing off sponsors invites, keep the pipeline going. I mean, this is what makes us so great is it's a natural born competition. I mean, any one of you guys can go Monday and try to beat one of us. So that's what makes this tour so great is any week anybody can win and having 150 guys every single week where there's a chance to win uh, you know that's that's what got me here so you can't I don't ever want that to change Last one for me, thanks Doug um, I think we've got this one guy maybe two this week uh, Ryan Brim would be one of them mm -hmm. who's playing in his first tournament that doesn't have a cut and I'm just trying to think if you recall the, what was the first for you when you got on tour Sure it was, a uh, event it was uh, the match play, which I got out very quickly. <laughs> Still didn't make it to the weekend? <laughs> and, uh, luckily, there was a tea time on Saturday, I think. No, it started on Wednesday, so no, I didn't make it to Saturday. What was your first stroke play? No cut. Was that cool at all, if you can recall? Uh, WGC workday at uh, concession. Yeah, and I was week number six of seven. So I was glad that I had a tea time that weekend. All right. Yeah. Appreciate the time as Thank always. You.